In PHP, arrays are extremely flexible. First, because they're not really arrays. We have two things in one. We have regular arrays, that is collections of items. And we also have what we call associative arrays or hash maps or dictionaries in some languages, which is meant to provide us with a way to hold key value pairs. Now, the thing is, they're different. They're not the same thing. And in most languages, they are represented differently. In PHP, for some reason, they decided to represent both of them with the same structure. We can write a regular array like this. Use the square brackets and then just pass the items we want to have on that array. For associative arrays, we can pass the key we want, for example, name, and then a value. And we can add more items, for example, my age. If we were to dump this, this is what we get. We have an array with four indexes with the integer values we specified. And then we have an array that's not composed of integers. It is composed of strings. And this is what we call an associative array. Now, as you probably know, arrays use a continuous block of memory and we use integers to access indexes of an array. So you cannot have gaps and you cannot have strings as indexes. With a hash map, you can have strings as indexes, which is what we have in the second example. And those are implemented using something called hash tables. And this is what PHP does behind the scenes for you. Even though they look like the same thing, there are vastly different things behind the scenes. So in this video, we're going to learn how hash tables are implemented and how we can implement a hash table from scratch in PHP using nothing but arrays. An array has a very simple structure. We have a continuous block of memory, and then we have items. We use indexes to access those items. As you can see, there are no gaps between indexes, and it starts from zero. This is what we have with the first example, a regular array. Now, sometimes we want to represent key per values. For example, we have name being a key and also age being a key and Mateus and 25 being values. Although PHP abstracts that for us and gives us as an associative array using the same syntax as regular arrays, they are very different. First, we cannot have a string as an index. So how does it work? How can we have something that looks like an array and we can access it via its index? but we can pass a string as the index. That's pretty weird. And the way it works is pretty clever. So let's say that we have a key, for example, name right here. This key goes through a hash function and this hash function returns an integer, for example, three. So now we know that we can identify the key name via the index three. And with that, we can allocate it to an index of an array, of an existing array. Here we have the indexes, and then we have what we call buckets, which is where we store the data. For example, my name. So when we access the name key, what's going on behind the scenes is it is converting that into an integer through some hashing algorithm. And then it is accessing an existing array internally and going to its index three, which then holds my name. Here's another example. We have three keys, name, age, and country. And let's say that we have some hashing algorithm that gives the value three for name. We can see it right here, gives the value one for age, and also gives the value one for country. So right here, you can see that we have the key being represented as the hashed value, the index, and we have the value on the bucket. There's a problem though. What if we have collisions? like we have right here. We have two keys generating the exact same hash, one. So we cannot simply store the value here because we have two values. There are two main strategies to solve the collision problem. One of them is called open addressing and the second one is called separate chaining, which is what PHP implements internally. It's very simple, but also very clever. What we can do is instead of just storing the value, we can store a key value pair inside the index. So for example, we would have age and its value. And then if we have a collision, we can add a new record and create a linked list. So we have age and we have country pointing to the same index. What we do is we have another array right here with the index zero being the key and the index one being the value. And then we have a linked list. So we also have a second record with the index zero being the key 
and the index one being the value. So whenever we look up age or country, it is going to look into this index and then it will go through all the records within this index until it finds one that matches the key. So for example, if we were to look for age, it would find this key on the first iteration. But if we were looking for country, you would only find the key on the second iteration. So in the vast case scenario where we only have one item inside the bucket, we have a O1 operation. However, the worse it gets, we approach ON because we will have to iterate through the values inside the bucket. Now, let's see how we can implement that in PHP from scratch. Let's jump into the code. All right, I have an empty hash map class and a file with some operations and some tasks. Don't mind the commented tasks, we're going to get to them soon. But we want to task two operations. Then we can put a key value pair into this hash map and then we can get the value of a key as well. All right, let's go into the implementation. The first thing we want to create is a table array. And this table array is going to store our buckets. So let's create an empty array. Let's also add a constructor. And within the constructor, we expect a size. The size is going to be the size of our table. We're going to get to that in a minute. Basically, what we want to do is to allocate memory to a bunch of buckets beforehand. So by the time this object is constructed, we're going to have the internal table array with a given size, in this case, 500. So let's do that. We're going to use the array fill method. We want to start from index zero. We want to add the size. And now we can either create uh, an array of no values, but in that case, we would have to add no checks. The good thing is that consumes less memory than the other option, which is adding an empty array. Since with an empty array, we have a predefined structure, we won't have to do a bunch of no checks. Let's go with that. Let's think of the first operation. Let's create a put method. We expect a key and a value, and this doesn't return anything. Like we said before, the first thing we gotta do is to calculate the index. So we gotta hash this key. Let's implement the hash method, which expects a string and returns an integer. Now, there are many hash algorithms you can use. We're going to go with a simple one to also demonstrate collisions. We're going to get an array of bytes based on the key. And then we're simply going to return the product of those bytes and use the modulo operator. So let's pass the size. This guarantees us that we're always going to get an index that's the size of the table or smaller. So we're not overflowing the array. Let's go back into the put method. So now that we know the index, it's pretty easy. Let's access the table. We have the index, and then we want to push a key pair value, which is going to be an array. So we push the key and the value. Index zero is going to be the key. Index one is going to be the value. Cool. Now let's also implement our get method. We want to get a key and we return mixed. So same thing, we need to first fetch the index. So we need to hash that key. And since we know we have many pairs within a bucket or that we can have at least one pair within a bucket, but also many pairs, we have to go through that bucket. We know the index. So we know we have an array of pairs here. And if the first element of the pair is equal to the key we're looking for, we can return it. If not, we're going to return no. Okay. We have two operations already. Let's run our test. Uh, did you mean int? Yes, I did mean integer. Sorry, int, not integer. Let's rerun it. Okay, cool. As you can see, we have a problem. We have a problem on line 22 on this assertion. What we're doing is, let, let's get rid of this for now and let's rerun this. As you can see, it passes. So we're able to put items within our map and also fetch items. If we were to dump this, Let's do it and let's see what we get. Okay, we get Mateus, that's pretty cool. The problem is right here, we're putting Mateus to the key name. And then right here, we are putting Jason to the key name. And as you can see, we are not getting Jason. So let's dump this and see what we get. Let's run this, we're still getting Mateus. And the problem is in the put operation, we're just adding this, adding this key per value to our bucket. 
But what if we already have that key within that bucket? That's what we need to check. So let's go through each value within that bucket like this. And then if the key is the key we're looking for, that means we just have to replace. We don't need to add anything new. So let's say that the value of the pair is going to be the value we were given and we can return here. Now this will not work. Let's run this. And the reason this doesn't work is because we're getting this reference by value. So we are changing the value of this variable within the scope of this method, but it is not changing the value in memory. We can fix that by just adding a commercial end like this. Let's run it. And now we're getting JSON. So if the key already exists in our bucket, we simply replace it. We don't have to add a new pair. Let's go back here. Let's add our assertion again and let's run this. OK, this is working pretty cool. Now, let's see if this can handle collisions. Let's add two strings that we have the same hash. The first one's going to be full and the second one is going to be oof. Remember, our hash is the product of the bytes and both of the strings are going to generate the same product. It's going to be four, five, six. Let's get foo's value and then let's also get oof's value. Let's run this. And yeah, we're getting the correct results. That's because what we have implemented right here is what we call separate chaining. If we have a collision, we add all pairs to the same bucket and then we go through the bucket. Let's verify that this is happening. I'm going to make this property public and then I'm going to construct a map with a limited size just so it's easier to see, for example, eight. Actually, five is fine. And after we add those, I am going to dump the table. And let's return here. Let's see what we have. All right, as you can see on index two, we have foo and we also have oof. So they both belong to the same bucket. We have a collision. They all have, they both have the same hash, but we get the correct results. Okay, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of all of our, of our dumps and let our assertions do the job. Okay, cool. Let's add those new assertions and I'm going to add the size method right here. And the size method is simply going to return a count of the table array. Let's run our file again and it's failing. Well, obviously we did not define this to have a size of two. So let's just find this with a size of two and it's failing on size four. So let, let's talk about what's happening. Right here, we're allocating some memory space for our table, right? And in our case, although the default is 500, we're passing two. So we are creating an array with two elements. If we only add two elements that use two buckets, that's fine. But if we add a third element that uses a third bucket, we're either going to overflow the array or in PHP's case, it is going to dynamically increase the size of the array. It is going to assign more memory to it. For performance reasons, we want to ensure that the load factor, that is how many buckets are being used in comparison to the size of the array is low. The first reason we want to always have room is obviously we want to be able to allocate new pairs into the map. And the second reason is we want to ensure that our load factor is never too high because that increases the number of collisions. If you have the same number of buckets, but you increase the number of pairs, the number of elements, then the number of collisions also increase. However, if you increase the number of buckets, then you have less collisions. Let's see how we can do this. The first thing we want to do is to create a count property, and this is going to keep track of how many elements we have into our hash map. So every time that we add a new pair into the map, we want to increase the count. Now you might be thinking, okay, it's possible that you have two pairs being added to the same index if there's a collision, if they have the same hash, but you're still increasing the count. And the reason is, even though you would not be filling the entire array, let's say that you have a table size of two and you have two values like foo and oof that occupy the same bucket, even though you still have space on the table, you still have a collision. And if you have a collision, it's going to be slower because you're going to have to iterate through the bucket. So ideally, we always, obviously that's not possible if we had infinite memory that it would be, but we don't. In the ideal scenario, we have one pair per bucket. 
that's the fastest operation. That would be O1. The worst case scenario approaches ON because you have to go through the values inside each bucket. So that is why we increase this whenever we add a new pair, regardless of whether it is occupying a new bucket. So what we can do is if the load factor, and let's put that into a variable just to make it easier to read. If the load factor, which is going to be the count divided by the size. So if the load factor is, let's say, higher or equal to 70%, we want to resize the table. So let's call a resize method. Let's implement this resize method. It's going to return void. Now for our resize method, first, we want to store the current table in a variable. Now let's assign some memory to our table. Let's do the same thing we did in the constructor. Let's fill it with empty arrays. Let's make it twice as large and add empty arrays to it. So now we can also increase the size and we can reset the count. The reason we want to reset the count is because we're going to have to populate this new table with the values from the old one. And the put method already increases the count. So let's go through each item on the old table through eight bucket and fetch it sparse. Now you might be thinking, okay, can't you just copy the bucket into the new table? And the answer is no, because now that we have more buckets available, the hashes are going to change. Remember that we are using the modulo operator against the size. So if the size increases, the hash is also going to change. And let's just put the item. We know that the first element is the key and the second element is the value. Now let's run our file. Okay, it seems like we still have a problem. Let's see what's going on. Oh, that's obvious. Okay, we're putting some items beforehand. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so by the time we get here, we already have two items, which means the table would be resized already. So let's get rid of this and move it here. So we have one item and at this point, the size is going to be two. So this should pass. Now we're adding a second item, which means we pass the threshold of 70% and the table is going to be resized. And at this point, it is going to have four buckets. Then we add two more items, which means the table is going to be resized again. And we can uncomment this. Let's run this and it's passing. So if we dump the size right here, we should get eight. There we go. So with this, we can ensure that we always have plenty of buckets available. And there we go, a very simple hash map implementation using only pure arrays. And it's that simple. That's obviously PHP's version is much more optimized, but that's the gist of it. Now, although in PHP we use the same syntax for both packed arrays as well as associative arrays, they behave very differently internally. If you're creating a packed array that is a pure array, it's going to be stored behind the scenes as a regular array. If you're creating an associative array, it is going to be created like we did right here with a hash map. And as you can see, operations with hash maps are bound to be slow. Sometimes you have to copy the entire array into a new one. We did not implement a remove method, but we would also have to copy the values. So there are some tricks to working with arrays in PHP. When you have an array and you add a value to it, that's a string, for example, you turn that into an associative array. You can have mixed arrays. You can have arrays with indexes, with integer indexes, and also with string indexes. And those are also associative arrays. They are not pure arrays. Uh, with that said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I hope there was a good pick on the implementation of a hash map. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.